Hello everybody, Scott Mitchell here with InMotion Hosing and it's time for another episode of Community Q&A. Now this time we have a question from Frederick and he says, hey, I'm trying to understand FTP and, and how to connect it to my web hosting account and how it works in general. Can you help with that? Actually, yes, FTP is a very useful tool and it's quite simple once you do the basics. So in this episode, we're going to go over the basics of FTP. Hey guys, in this video today we're going to go over some FTP basics, what it is, how to get a client, how to upload files, and how to do some accounts with it. Now FTP is an acronym for File Transfer Protocol, which simply means I'm moving files from one place to another. Very typically this is going to be on your local computer up to your hosting computer. So the first thing you need is a, a file, uh, file transfer protocol client. So we're going to go with FileZilla, which is one of the uh, top free clients out there. Free is always good. All right, so we go here to FileZilla and we're going to click on download FileZilla client. Now quickly I'm going to show you not to click on this green button here. If you click on the additional options, I'll come back to why in just a moment. So click on your download options. Uh, if you're Linux or Mac, you have to do this anyway. If you're Windows, click on it anyway and come up here and click on this particular link here. Um, the one you want for the setup is going to extract it and put it together for you. So that's fine. Okay, so that's the one you want to do. Do not click on this green one. Okay, as to why, pop it up for you. If I click on the green one, I get this little file here, the SF uh, tag, which stands for Source Forge, is where it comes from. Uh, the second one comes from here, uh, says this FileZilla, FZ icon. Uh, it comes from the same place, but the top one here is kind of in a wrapper, so it tries to install additional stuff on your computer. You know, change your browser homepage, you know, additional um, uh, address bar, little toolbar, something like that, if you're not careful. You can, you can say no, but if you're kind of in a hurry, you don't realize that it asks you for that, and you keep clicking next, 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 you're going to get that additional stuff on your computer. So come down here, make sure it's the FZ icon, install it, same program, no extra stuff, okay? Now, now, Connecting to a, the server, it just needs an FTP account. You already have one with your cPanel account. Your cPanel username and password is the same thing as your primary FTP account. Okay, this FTP account will get you access to every file and folder inside your hosting account, just like your cPanel does. So what we're going to do is show you how to connect. So go over here and click on your files that like client, bring it up. Okay, and it's what it looks like. Let's see, cPanel, we're going to file this up again. Okay, you see the four little areas up top here? This is called the Quick Connect. It needs four bits of information. It needs a host name, which is your server name, or your domain name. It needs a username, it needs a password, and a port number. Okay, so host name can be example.com if that's your domain name. If it's pointed to us, go ahead and use that. If it's not pointed to our servers, then you want to use the IP address or the server name. You can find that in your cPanel. cPanel. Scroll down this left hand sidebar, expand it if it's already expanded. I says collapse, I've got it expanded. Down where it says shared IP address, this is the IP address for your server. Okay, you can use that. All right, your cPanel username, you should know that since you're logged in. Okay, if you forget for whatever reason, it's up top right here under home directory, just use that last piece, that's going to be your cPanel username. Okay, so we're going to put our host name in there, our username, and our password. Okay, port can be blank, it's 21 by default, it'll use that if you don't put anything in there, so either put nothing or 21. Now notice on the left side here I have C drives, this is my local drive, my computer, and over here there's nothing because I'm not connected yet. So watch, when I click Quick Connect, runs through, talks to me about a, a certificate on my server. I say okay, comes through. Oh, I got a failure. Why did I get a failure? Probably the password, so let's try again. All right, and we're in. So if you mistype your password, that's what you get. First thing to check is the password. Uh, I know the cPanel username, I can see that. And if you 
typed in your host name, like your IP address or your email, uh, not email, your domain name, you may want to check that spelling too. So quick possibility, but if you run across it, you're going to see what I saw here, which was the 530 login authentication failed, which means one of these three things is wrong. Okay, but I'm in now, so let's go here. Uh, now I can see everything here on my server side. I'm in the home directory, which is where it lets me in as a cPanel user. I see everything. Public HTML is my login. Uh, login is my home directory for my domain name. Okay, see I have some things here. And over here on the right, left hand side is the things in my download folder. Okay, you can see a couple of files here we're gonna mess with the index and the page two. The index already exists over here, page two does not. All right, so let's go visit my website really fast. Right now it says, welcome to my home page, which is great. So my page that I wanna move over, my index page, is changed, it's modified. So we're gonna move that over. I've modified it on my computer. Um, real easy to do, you just grab it and drag it on over. Now watch, when I do this, it already exists over here, so it's gonna yell at me. It says, hey, what do you wanna do? Overwrite is the first option. That's good. So if I bring it over, I intend to bring it over, I want to overwrite it, keep that as overwrite. If I'm gonna do this multiple times in this session, you can click always use this option and it'll stop bugging you, okay? If you wanna skip for whatever reason, just hit skip. All right, overwrite and skip, are the ones I use, and I use, do use this a lot. But these other ones, you know, they're, they're variations of overwrite. I don't really worry about those too much. Uh, hit okay. All right, so now I go back and visit my home page. Go to refresh. All right, my file was uploaded successfully. It's now up to date, okay? Now, page two, you know, that doesn't exist yet, so I try to visit that page. I get a 404 error, which means it doesn't exist. Page can't be found. So then I drag it on over. Now page two is in that side. I come back, give it a refresh. Boom, page two is right there. So it's very easy, just drag things and move them one side to the other and you can do the reverse. You can take it from the server side and move it down to your computer. It works the same way both ways, just like a doorway. Okay, so that's the easy stuff. All right, now again, we use the quick connect. So if I turn this off and come back, this stuff isn't gonna be here anymore. This is if I just wanna log in real fast. So we take this information, remember it, you go to file, site manager, and you can add it as a new site. Now, mine's called new site. Um, that's where it'll start and have information's already there. I have my host name, okay? You just fill out this little form here. Only this page, you don't have to worry about the other stuff because this is all you need right off the bat. So I put in my host name, I put in the FTP protocol, I use this encryption, I have asked for password, and I didn't have the right username there. I'm glad I didn't use that, okay? I have my username, okay? and it's gonna ask me for a password. I can't put password in there right now. I set FileZilla up that way. When it logs in, it's gonna ask you in Journey install. Um, if you set it up to where it does allow you to use password, you just put normal here and then type in a password and it'll work, okay? If you did what I did and told it to ask every time, even if I put that in there, it's not happy with it. It tells me no. And if I go back and look at it, you know, it's still, not there. So mine's set for ask for password, okay? Anyway, you go here, if you have more than one, you have a list here and you click on which one you wanna use and hit the connect button and it's gonna go for it, okay? Yeah. Now, that's how to move things back and forth, that's how to log in, that's the quick connect, which you can use if you just know it off the top of your head. I recommend setting one up like this and then you can go there every time, you don't have to worry about it, okay? So that's the ins and outs of the quick and easy. Now let's go to the C panel. I'll show you a little bit about accounts. Okay, so go down to the files category and FTP accounts. All right, here we go. You can add accounts if you want and we give other people access, that's great. Now, FTP accounts doesn't have any. Well, we do have the one. If you get on here, we have our cPanel user one, but um, we don't have any more. So let's give Bob, Bob's gonna work with us. He's gonna be uh, our editor on our site. All right, we'll give him a password here, and Bob is gonna have slash Bob. It tries to give them their own folder right away. Well, 
we're going to let Bob have access to the full site. We didn't give him access to the whole thing, the, the, the home directory and down, but we gave him access to the public HTML, which is the act from my main domain on down, okay? I like that, it's fine, no problem. Give him an account, and you see he pops up down here. Come on, Bob. Now, Bob is gonna have a strange, long, email address looking type of login name, okay? Bob at customercommunityimh.com. That's true for every account other than your cPanel user account, okay? So everybody will have this same kind of looking long email address thing. That's just the way it is, okay? If I add Sally, it'll use Sally at, you know, customercommunityimh.com. The only one that has a short one is the cPanel user. Now notice that Bob has access, his path here is set to public HTML. He can see everything underneath it, okay? Now Sally, on the other hand, we mentioned her. We're gonna bring her on board. Oh, it didn't match, let's try again. Okay, she's gonna be a photographer. She's gonna upload things only to her Sally folder, which is fine with us, because then we'll take it from the Sally folder, we'll use the, the images all over the site. You know, that's how that works. So she doesn't have access to anything else. The only thing she can see is the Sally folder and anything inside the Sally folder. Okay, so that's how that works. She logs in, that's all she sees. Bob can get to it because it's underneath public HTML. I can get to it because it's underneath my home directory, which is underneath public HTML, so I have all that access to all that. So, which is great. A quick caveat to this is if you have another domain name on your site, say abc123.com, and you know, Jake is gonna work for us and he's gonna run that site for me, but I can't give him jake at abc123.com. I can only give him at customercommunityimh.com because it only works with the primary domain name. It doesn't work with anything else. So, you know, it's not too big a deal because once I get in here, I mean, it's only a login name after all. I give it to him and then I have a folder called abc123.com that has the entire website on it for that. So I give that. So he has access only to that site, which is great. He can't see Sally's folder. He can't see above abc123.com, so he can't see public HTML. Bob can see down there because he can see everything under public HTML. Bob can see Sally, again, he can see everything under public HTML. Okay, that's how this works. So quick and easy, just make sure that whoever you give access to, you don't mind them seeing everything underneath. Deletions are a little bit of a sore spot for some people. So if I'm gonna delete, say I'm, we're moving Jake and abc123.com to an old, their, a whole other server. So if I click delete, and I've already moved the files, I don't need this thing anymore, I'm just doing cleanup, I can delete account Jake and delete all files under abc123.com. Remember, they're gone forever if I do this. Not a problem, click it, it's done. Now, Sally, Sally is the same thing. Sally is going to do her own thing. She's starting her own website. Again, she's not working here anymore. We've already gotten all the files out of her folder. So again, delete account and files. Not a big deal. But Bob, you know, we're moving him to another project, which is great. We're going to move him. We delete, but we don't want to delete this because it deletes our entire site. We're not moving the site. We want to keep the files here. So we wish to delete the account, Bob. Okay? That way, just his account, he removes his ability to log in, everything else is good. So, be careful when you're deleting people. If, to be safe, it's best to just delete the account only, and then you can go back into the cPanel later on to the file manager and remove any files or folders you don't need. So, that's probably the best way for, at first, to get used to everything. So, we've gone over all the FTP basics, where to get a nice client, how to log in, what to log in with, moving files and folders, and creating accounts. Well guys, that's all for another episode of Community Q&A. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to like it and subscribe to the YouTube channel below. Also, don't forget to leave your questions in the comments so we know what to bring you in a future episode. Thanks and see you next time. Did you know the InMotion Hosting Support Center has thousands of articles, pictures, and video tutorials to help you out with your web hosting questions? There's something for everyone, from beginners to experts. Join our community and sign up with your Facebook or Google Plus for free swag, prizes, and discounts. 
visit our support center at InMotionHosting.com support.